Hi everybody, I'm Meg and welcome to Got The Passports. The lockdown life is really making us think about all our travel adventures and we're missing it so much. One of the places that we went to recently was Mauritius and so we've put together a list of 10 things that we did in Mauritius that might help you plan your trip to the island in the future. Take a look. The Five Island Boat Tour was definitely one of the best things we ever did in Mauritius. Colors were unbelievable and we got taken to so many beautiful historical places. Unfortunately, we got told we were going on a catamaran, so we dressed completely inappropriately. So we do suggest taking a second set of clothing to make sure you get the best out of the day. Our hosts were super friendly though, really nice, and we had an amazing time. We did end up getting really sunburned, so make sure you pack strong sunblock and enjoy the five beautiful destinations that they take you to. The botanical gardens in Mauritius are absolutely beautiful. We chose not to do a guided tour, but actually regretted it later because the tour takes you through all the spices and the herbs that grow in the garden, which is amazing. We did, however, discover our own animals in the park, including a nest of tongue, which apparently are still eaten by some of the local people, but they were super cute and the gardens were just so beautiful overall, a definite must do. Just outside the Verana Tamarind Hotel is a little surf shop that's got water sports and all sorts of activities that you can do, including swimming with the wild dolphins. They are wild, so it's not guaranteed that they will be there every single day, but at this stage, they pretty much are. It's super affordable and an absolutely incredible experience to go and swim with the dolphins. It was a really stormy day on the day that I went, but it was still completely magical. Definite must do. The Shimmerel viewpoint was an unexpected stop along our journey from Tamarind to the south of the island. The driver kindly pulled over for us to take in the incredible views across the west coast of Mauritius. The colors were beautiful and it was a wonderful way to learn about the lives of escaped slaves who had hidden in the Lamorne mountain to the south. <laughs> The Chimarel waterfall is the tallest waterfall on the island at 80 meters. It's possible to hike down to the bottom on a guided tour, but we just look from the top because it's free. Just around the corner of the waterfall is the Rumery de Chimarel, which is the rum distillery. And whoo, things got a little boozy here. We had a fantastic tour where they showed us how they uh, distill the rum. And then we had some cocktails made for us and a little bit of rum tasting. Definitely really interesting. They also have a beautiful restaurant there as well as lychee trees growing in the garden, which is really fun to see. Um, yeah, be careful of this stop. It might be a little bit too much fun. There's not much I can tell you about the Shimmerel Seven Colored Earths. It's one of Mauritius's most popular destinations. It really is beautiful to see. Get yourself an ice cream or a glass of freshly squeezed sugarcane water and take in the sights. Excuse my French, but Chateau de la Bordonnais 
is an exquisite example of the colonial homes built on the island of Mauritius. The family used to live in the home up until a few years ago, so it's still very much in its colonial state and is a true part of Mauritian history. They also have an exquisite restaurant on the grounds that serves traditional Mauritian cuisine that you can enjoy before exploring the museum. La Vencha de Sucre literally translates to the Adventures of Sugar and that is the perfect name for the Sugar Museum in Mauritius. This museum dictates the history of sugarcane and sugar on the island of Mauritius from the colonizers to the economic development, how the sugarcane is used, how it is processed, what it's turned into and the different types of sugar that you can get in Mauritius. It's a little bit of an old school display but it's really interesting in terms of the history and the sugar shop has phenomenal sugar in. We bought some and came home and made it into fudge and it was the best fudge we've ever had. So definitely stop by and learn about sugar and the journey it's been on. And finally, the Ebony Forest Reserve was such an unexpected pleasure. Journey starts with a jeep ride all the way to the top of the mountain where you go along some walkways. The guide talks you through the flora and the fauna and points out tiny little creatures like geckos all over the forest. I also saw my very first ebony tree which takes a really long time to grow. This one is only about 200 years old. When the settlers first arrived, there were ebony trees about a meter wide, and that means they were about a thousand years old. It was super interesting, unexpected, and when you get to the top, there are the most extraordinary views across the west coast of Mauritius. It's a fantastic way to spend the morning or the late afternoon with the family exploring Mauritius further. Thank you so much for watching you guys we hope that that will really help you plan your trip there's actually vlogs down below for each individual adventure and a blog post check it out if you want to know more otherwise thanks so much for watching we'll see you in the next video